So we know that 56% of people feel that if they weren't properly supported after coming back to work following a bereavement, they might actually consider leaving their jobs. So it's really important to consider what we might want that support to look like. And the first and most important thing that you can do is ask the employee what they would find most helpful for them. And it's really important as well because grief and bereavement changes over time. Those needs will change as well. So it's important to check in with an employee not only before they come back to work, but also after they come back to work to make sure that those needs are still being met. In some instances, it may also be relevant to let other employees know what would be most helpful for that individual. So it's really important to let the rest of your staff know that it's really significant for that employee to still be included in workplace conversations, but also in social occasions as well. And even if they say that they don't want to come along, for future events, still invite them anyway so that they feel included. So when you first make contact with a bereaved employee, one thing that can be really helpful is letting them know in advance that you're going to be calling and if possible, giving them a selection of times that you can give them a call just so that they can mentally and emotionally prepare for what could be a really tough conversation. It's also important to make sure that this conversation happens in a safe space and for yourself a private environment where you don't have any time constraints so that the individual doesn't feel rushed. It's also important when you first speak to them to acknowledge what's actually happened and be able to say, I'm so sorry about what happened to your mum or I'm so sorry that your baby died. And it's also absolutely fine to use the person's name. And if you don't know their name, it's okay to ask as well. Be aware of your own experiences of loss. We're all human and it's absolutely fine to show that humanity, but we just want to make sure that we don't take away from that individual's own experiences. So when checking in with a bereaved employee, it can be really helpful to actually ask them how often they want you to check in with them and how you check in with them as well. It can be really good to make sure that they're aware of what they're entitled to, both in terms of bereavement leave and in terms of what support is available to them as well, perhaps through an employee assistance programme. It's important to ask them what they actually want to know about work and what's going on at work and also being able to check in with them that the support that you are offering is still meeting their needs. At the end of all of this it can also be really helpful to ask them whether they would like to send you anything that you've spoken about in writing. When someone is grieving it's really hard to take in a lot of information so having it in writing to refer back to can be really helpful. The best way to answer this question is to turn to what bereaved families have told us are helpful. So the first one is to avoid platitudes. Try not to say things like, at least the person had a good life, or you can always try for another child. It's also important to resist saying, I know how you feel. Everyone's experience of grief is completely different. And instead, you can try to seek to understand that individual's unique experience. Don't be afraid to show your humanity and feel comfortable to say, I'm so sorry, that sounds incredibly sad, what a difficult time for you. Acknowledge the person's loss and feel free to say the name of the person who died. And if you don't know their name, it's absolutely okay to ask. And also give the person opportunities to talk about what's happened if they want to. For some employees, they might find it really hard to come to you and actually acknowledge when they're struggling. So something that might be helpful is agreeing on some non-verbal ways that they can let you know they might be struggling. It could be something as simple as sending you a particular emoji or a particular word in a message to let you know that they might need a bit of time out. A really good place to start is by checking in with your employee that they've spoken to their GP and that their GP has given them some information on bereavement support that's available to them. 
Another really good thing that you can do is make sure that the employee is aware of what they're entitled to in terms of bereavement leave, but also what support is available to them through work, whether that's through an employee assistance program or anything else the work can do to support them. Another thing that can be really helpful is having a look at what support organisations you can signpost them to and giving them a written list that they can then take away with them. Organisations such as Child Bereavement UK or others that provide specific support for their bereavement. We also have the At A Loss website where people can go online and find bereavement support more local to them.